Hey guys, I'm Hal Landon from Video University. Today we're looking at After Effects with John Mello. John's originally from Bristol, Rhode Island, where we're shooting today. He does a lot of After Effects work for TV commercials and other corporate video projects. John's going to give us an overview of the After Effects interface. This will be in two parts. You can see both parts at the Video University blog. Here's part one. Hi, I'm John Mello with Video University, and today we're going to be doing a very rudimentary introductory look into After Effects. Uh, most folks, uh, when they edit their video, uh, tend to use the built-in title generators and animation properties that they can find within their editing program, whether it be Premiere, Avid, Final Cut, Vegas, or any of the others that are available. Uh, and sometimes when they open up After Effects, uh, it gets a little daunting. Sometimes it can look a little mysterious and a little too complicated. And uh, the reality is it can't be further from the truth. So today we are working within uh, After Effects CS3. But what I'm going to show you applies to all the versions of After Effects, whether it be CS4, which is the newest version, all the way back to... Uh, well, if you remember After Effects 1 or COSA, which was happened to be uh, developed in Providence, Rhode Island, where uh, we are uh, recording this. Okay, so this is the basic After Effects interface, um, and what we'll do in this particular video is we'll just introduce each of the different regions of the interface uh, and how it correlates to your editor. So first, we're going to stop up here at the toolbar, which is also shortcut driven and it probably behooves you to learn the shortcuts over the course of time but right away we're going to start over here at the pointer and the pointer is just like the selector tool in any other uh, application uh, you're allowed to uh, select things the hand tool kind of shifts things around just like if you're in final uh, just like if you're in Photoshop here we have the zoomer which is just what you would expect it to be and these are uh, camera rotators, which we'll get into at a later time when we get into 3D cameras. Um, and a pan behind tool is also another handy, uh, you can look at this like a, a slip edit tool or perhaps a uh, anchor point adjustment tool. And then you have your uh, masks and uh, beziers, just like if you were to put a garbage mat in with your editing program. Here's your text. Uh, and you can have multiple options of horizontal text or vertical text. And uh, we have the paintbrush, the clone tool, the eraser, and the pin, which is used for a very uh, popular and powerful uh, aspect of After Effects called Puppet Tool, which we'll get into in another episode. So over here we have our project bin, where uh, we have the majority of you can look at this like your bin in your editor where you'd have all of your project information. This particular project just happens to be uh, 864, 486 with a square pixel aspect ratio. And over here you would have your effect controls. And right now we do not have any effects applied to our video footage, so this is empty. So going back to the project window, we see a preview of our video that we have loaded in. In this particular sample, we have a video I made for a uh, organization who wanted a simple website animation uh, to show their website in action. Uh, now, of course, I could have just screen capped the website and thrown it up as a still or done a pan over. But, uh, you know, when you have After Effects at your disposal, uh, it's, it's kind of easy and fun to kind of dress it up a little bit and throw some interactivity into the graphic, which uh, increases the production value just that much more. So right here we have the project window. We're going to go to the right now and we're going to show the viewer. And this is just like the viewer in your... Uh, in your editor. Um, you can zoom in on it, uh, all different types of thing. Uh, but ultimately, this is where you would look at your, uh, your video being uh, worked on in After Effects. Over here, we have the, all the different types of information that you may need for uh, your program, uh, for your uh, project, whether it be the color value information, the alpha value information, the X and Y coordinates of your cursor, and we have the audio, which I don't really use too often because After Effects isn't necessarily an audio editor and you wouldn't necessarily use it to do audio, but, um, you know, it's there and you, if you need it. Down here we have the time controls, which I'll drop down. 
And what we have here in the time controls is just like your playback uh, operations in your editing program, play, frame back, uh, roll back to the end point. You can select your frame rate for your previews, uh, your RAM previews, where it loads all of your frames into RAM and plays it back at a predetermined frame rate, depending upon your speed of your computer. Here we have the skip frames. It's another uh, way of saving resources. If you have a fairly complex scene and you just want to see the mechanics of it and not necessarily the, the fine aspects of it, you can skip up to five frames. So to play every fifth frame. And here we have even more control over uh, you know, handling the resources. You can have your resolution set to auto or any one of these, or even custom. You can set it to you know, every 10 frames you can render. From current time, obviously where the playhead is and full screen, will play back your RAM preview in the full screen mode. Here we have our character generator, where we can have obviously a list of different fonts that are available to you. And this looks just like the same uh, characters that you'll find in Photoshop or uh, Illustrator. Here are the paragraph information, uh, same as, same as uh, what you'd expect from any of those other imaging editing programs. However, After Effects uh, is very heavily reliant and mainly uh, only for this. This is your effects palette. And what you have here are all of your effects. Now, I do have some aftermarket effects in here that I use, uh, uh, but uh, normally uh, it does come well stocked from the manufacturer with tons of plugins for you to be able to apply to your footage and uh, manipulate it in an in infinite amount of ways. And later on in some of these videos, we'll go over into some of the more popular uh, plugins here, such as trap code plugins, which are always a, always a crowd pleaser. We have Shine in particular and Starglow and some effects that you're probably very accustomed to seeing uh, on television commercials. Thank you, John, for that helpful introduction to the After Effects interface. You can see part two of this After Effects overview at the Video University blog. Please visit our website. If you have questions or comments about After Effects, we'd love to hear from you. Some people make comments on YouTube, but we don't check that very often. So to ensure that we see your comments, please make them on VideoUniversity.com. Thanks for watching. Happy trails.